It's Mock Draft Monday, getting ready for the NFL Draft. A four-rounder from one of our colleagues with some very interesting picks where these quarterbacks go most of all. All that more coming up on today's Peacock and Williamson. NFL analyst Brian Peacock and former NFL scout Matt Williamson bring you expert NFL analysis every day in less than 30 minutes. Get an inside look into the NFL on the field and in the front office. With elite breakdowns, next-level analysis, and in-depth information only for the real NFL fans. This is Peacock and Williamson, and it starts now. Welcome to the Peacock and Williamson NFL show. Brian Peacock alongside Matt Williamson at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL. Thanks, everybody, for making us your first listen on the Locked On Podcast Network, your team Every day, we love the everydayers, and we love it when you are subscribed on YouTube. You can find us everywhere you find your podcast. Drop a comment on YouTube or a question for our mailbag this week as well on that YouTube page. Um, we we got to start pumping up our yeah mock draft special, Matt. And the mock draft we're going to be looking at today comes from one of the co-hosts of our fabulous panel And the ultimate mock draft, the Locked On NFL mock draft special for 2024. We do it every year. It gets a little bigger and better every single year. So much fun. And uh, our guys at Locked On NFL draft, Keith Sanchez and Damian Parson, are in the booth with us for the entire mock draft, the entire first round and beyond. And Damian dropped his own mock draft, a four-rounder today, Matt. That's an endeavor, man. Yeah, I mean, good on him for doing a four-round mock draft. So we're not going to go through every pick. Yep, you can find that at uh, the Draft Network, where he also writes and does a, a ton of write-ups. So you got to mm-hmm. subscribe and uh, listen to Locked On NFL Draft. Make sure you look out for our mock draft special that is coming very soon. We're in the middle of recording that one. But I want to highlight Damian's mock draft. First of all, because he went four rounds and some very interesting picks here in this mock draft. I do want to let everybody know that, that, that uh, today's episode – is brought to you by Game Time. Download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Um, onto the mock draft here, and the way it starts is like every mock draft starts, and it's with Chicago Bears quarterback Caleb Williams. And we're not going to highlight every pick, we're not going to talk about every pick, but I want to get into you know beyond first round with some of these mocks too, because we send, spend uh, so much time on the first round. But really, the first thirteen picks or so I want to highlight here because the big thing for me is where's the trade up. Like, it's got to happen. Where do the quarterbacks go? How does this all shake out? And one of the fascinating teams here is the third pick in the draft with the New England Patriots. Are they willing to move out of that spot? And do they have the nest built for their quarterback? And in this mock draft, after Jaden Daniels goes to Caleb Williams one, the Minnesota Vikings trade up to number three. And it's Drake May, quarterback out of North Carolina, to the Minnesota Vikings after moving up and they had to give up both their first this year, first next year. You can argue about what they'd have to give up and whatnot, but you know, to go all the way up to number three, it would be expensive. Yeah. Do you like Damien? Go, real quick. Like, real go, quick. Ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Do you like Jay? Do you like Drake may fit for the Vikings? Because all along it's love. been like JJ McCarthy. Do you think JJ McCarthy is a guy that the Vikings love? Like more, where they trade up to three and still take McCarthy with may on the board. So first off, Damian is very impressive, and I urge all of you to check him out. And this is quite endeavor. This is a four-round mock. And not only does he break it down to four rounds, he tells you, I mean, he he breaks down every trade. I mean, 1-3 for 11, 23, 108 in a first. I mean, that's a ton to give up. But I think that's the perfect match to me. Of all Mm -hmm. the quarterback team matches made to Minnesota, to me, is ideal. I mean, it's a quarterback in charge of the team at head coach they have tackles they have receivers Darnold could hold down the fort for a little if need be I think May could use a little bit of time I would bet that this is the team this is Minnesota's top target Caleb aside side note I've been hearing more and more and I don't know if it's smokescreen you know this time last year Will Levis is a guaranteed to first round pick but McCarthy at two I think is a real possibility to Washington and I also get the impression he can't fall out of the top six. The Minnesota Vikings, Matt? Yeah, not too shabby. Yeah, it's his pick. Like it's, it. don't, don't, it's a don't. stretch. Yeah. <laughs> don't give me love where it's not necessary on that one. Uh, <laughs> uh, but it just dawned on me there. So uh, Derek, Drake made to the Minnesota Vikings here after this trade up. I don't know what to think. Like The more I think about the quarterbacks, the more I look at them, I'm like, yeah, I, 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 I have no idea. I, yeah. I don't know. 
But if he ends up in Minnesota, though, I'm buying more Drake May stock than I already own. I mean, I think his chance of success goes up dramatically. We have to get through a lot more picks, but just really quick with the just the psychology of all of this and where teams are at and how things have have turned about. If we if we thought we knew who the second pick in the draft was going to be, because we do know who the first pick in the draft is going to be, mm-hmm. don't you think the Vikings and the Patriots would have already made this trade? Yeah. So that means the Vikings, or that means if if New England's willing to make this trade on draft day, they're waiting to see what happens at two, which means they have a preference at what happens at number two. Right? Yeah. I mean, I guess maybe they have a deal. You know, like as soon as players well, Vikings that have a deal and they only want May, but if May goes two, then now the Vikings don't want to move up. Right. Yeah, I can see that. You know, like here's our offer. It's extreme. It includes three first round picks, New England. If May is there, we'll do it. As soon as that second pick is in, you will know immediately. And obviously and when when the when the Vikings trade happens, whatever it does, and when the quarterback stuff starts to shake out, it'll really change the dynamic of everything. Cause now there's instead of four quarterbacks in a row, it's three quarterbacks. And now there's a new quarterback needy team, potentially at 11 Marvin Harrison jr. Going to the cards at four. Then you got Romo Dunze going five, not Malik neighbors to the Los Angeles chargers. JJ McCarthy then goes number six to the New York giants. They don't have to move and they draft a quarterback there. Joe Walt to the, uh, the Tennessee Titans at seven Dallas Turner, First defensive player off the board to the Falcons at eight. There's always a defensive player there, and they always get their first crack at it. And which one that is is usually the question in these mock drafts. Then it's either Malik or, or Odunze. They go to the Bears at number nine, and here it's Malik Neighbors since Odunze went number uh, five to the Chargers. Mm-hmm. And then at 11, the New England Patriots go with Olu Fashionu. So uh, after, that I love trade, that, yeah. after that trade, you got Fashionu from Penn State, the offensive, and apparently it is uh, – Fashionu or Fashionu it is not Fashanu, which I, I thought it had to be. And I thought, you know, us gringos were getting it wrong when we were saying Fashionu, but it is Fashionu for uh, Olu Fashionu. And, and he said it himself. And that's where we got that information. So, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, that's cool. That's 11 to the Patriots. I'm going to sneak all the way down here to 23. So, after the Patriots move down, they end up with Fashionu, an offensive tackle, and Brian Thomas Jr., wide receiver out of LSU with 11 and 23, building the nest for whatever future quarterback ends up there. What do you think about that part of the hall plus a first rounder in the future and a fourth to go with that trade? Do you like it after you see what the Patriots got? Yeah, I do. I mean, there's some of these trades that we see in these mocks where a team like Arizona ends up with, you know, a corner and Thomas. And I'm like, yeah, just give me Marvin. You know what I mean? Where this one, it's like you need so much and you need everything on offense. You could just dedicate this entire draft to your offensive side of the ball, including a true left tackle. And now you're really in a good spot with your first round pick and the Vikes first round pick, both of whom probably aren't playoff teams, but could be, I guess, I mean, in Minnesota, but I don't think they're gonna be picking 25 or later with either one of those picks. I mean, you have a lot of resources to get your quarterback at that point. And I've already seen some some hate tweets at Damian for what he has doing with, with some of these teams. And I do want to remind everybody, the most insane mock draft you see before the draft, because we get in such group think mode with all these prospects, what can happen, who can go where, what order we all have them in. The NFL teams just think about there's 32 teams with 32 different boards, and they don't care what outside perspective is on players. They're, they're drafting players for their team and how their coaches see it and how their scouts and GMs see it. And the real draft is always more insane than the most insane mock draft leading up to the draft. So don't forget that if you think something is uh, is out of whack in a mock draft. But uh, it's fu- funny, you and I haven't been doing this podcast that long, but I guess we kind of have because I I think of you every time of the, this time of year all the time because you say this right around April eighth every year. You know, like your most insane mock draft you see still won't match. Say, this could never happen. And they're right, right, right. Their quibble is with a guy that went. 12 instead of eight. And like, if you think a guy dropped <laughs> right, five right, more right. spots in the draft is insane, then your head is going to explode on April 25th. It's going to be nuts. And it always just, is. And just to tease it here, especially if what happens at 12 and 13 and Damien's draft goes down. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm getting to here. Yeah. So next, what happens at 12 and 13? A hint, uh, quarterbacks are involved. We'll go through some other highlights from his four-round mock draft. Damien Parsons 
four round mock draft that is it's at the draft network we gotta check out all of his stuff including the upcoming mock draft special here on the locked on podcast network rest of the mock next This episode of Peacock and Williamson is brought to you by Game Time. Game Time is now authorized ticket marketplace of Major League Baseball, which makes getting those tickets even faster and easier to your favorite baseball games. Prices on Game Time actually go down the closer it gets to first pitch with killer last minute deals on the app, all in prices, views from your seat, and their lowest price guarantee. Game Time takes all the guesswork out of buying Major League Baseball tickets. Of course, you can buy your NFL tickets when it comes time to that. Your favorite concerts, uh, comedy shows, theater events, whatever it is near you, you can find those tickets and last-minute tickets at that on Game Time. Flash deals, zone deals, the views from your seat, lowest price guarantee, and uh, take all the guesswork out of buying those tickets with the Game Time apps. All you got to do, is you down, download the Game Time app, create an account, and use code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off your first ticket purchase. Terms apply. Again, create an account and redeem code Locked On NFL for twenty dollars off. Download Game Time today. Last minute tickets, lowest price guaranteed. What do you think? Six quarterbacks in the top thirteen. Bo Nix to the Denver Broncos at twelve in Damian Parsons' four-round mock draft, and Michael Penix to the Raiders at pick 13. I like the fits with those two teams. I do, too. I like those quarterbacks in round two a little better, and I do have Penix ahead of Knicks. So I, I would rather see something like Penix to the Patriots at 23 and Knicks in round three. I was going to say round two. I don't think the, the Broncos even have a second-round pick. Round three to the Broncos, right? Because you, you just mentioned the thing about Levis. At this time, two years ago, Malik Willis was being yeah. mocked number two overall. It was Lions, Aiden Hutchinson yeah. one to the Jaguars, then the Lions going number two with Malik Willis. He ended up being a third round pick, and then uh, and kind of shocking everybody was uh, the Jaguars pick leaving Aiden Hutchinson to the uh, to the Lions at two. So uh, things could be crazy out there, and you never know how teams view these quarterbacks. These teams have painted themselves into a a corner where quarterback is such a huge need, but. Penix to the Raiders, I could see at 13. I just, I don't know about Knicks to the Broncos, but I see Knicks more often in round one mocks than the Penix. So maybe I'm off on that, Matt. I agree with all that. I, I actually put Penix ahead of Knicks as well recently. And I hope I don't sound redundant with this because I'd lump these two teams together. I feel like every podcast I do because I would not want to be the GM of either one of these teams, especially Denver. Denver might be thir my 32nd choice of what, who I want to be the GM of right now. And Desperate teams do desperate stuff, and it worries me. I, I, I don't want to, like, make a big wave, but I think this would be dumb. I mean, I don't think that they're close to the 12th and 13th best player in this draft. But I also, you know, the scenario you laid out with where the make the Levis move or the 23rd pick, I don't know if that's possible. I mean, especially if four go that early, all there's only two more to pick from, and there's three or four teams that could use them. So, I think they're going to go early, and I, I do believe in that adage of, well, if you're willing to take them at 30, why not take them at 13 if it's a quarterback? I mean, I, I kind of get it, but, man, couldn't you have massaged this a little bit more, move down <laughs> somehow or something, you know? And here's the thing. So what if what if the, what if the, the Broncos move down mm -hmm. and – then the Raiders draft a non-quarterback at 13. But then the Raiders go, oh, shoot, let's go back up and get a quarterback in front of the Broncos because we know what the Broncos yeah. are going to do now after they trade it down. So, yeah, and they're division they, rivals. And they know, you know, yeah, right, yeah. Exactly. Oh, I think all that's in play. I think that, I, again, I don't mean to sound redundant, but I think 12 and 13 is maybe the most interesting point in the draft considering they're the quarterback no-man's land teams. They're both in not great roster situations. They play against each other. They're in Mahomes' you know, division. It's it's a rough spot to be in right next to each other. And who knows? Maybe one of those, like, we didn't expect Justin Fields to be there at pick, what, 11 did he end up going in 2021? So, yeah. Mac Jones at 15. So who knows? Maybe they maybe they sit there and get one of the top four quarterbacks at 12 or 13. Man. That is something maybe. that could, could possibly happen. Out there, or if they so. moved up two spots, three spots, right. that mm -hmm. I, you know, for you know, for one of these guys, that I'd understand. But sticking and picking Knicks and Penix, uh, it doesn't settle great with me. 
How about Cooper DeGene, 15 to the Atlanta or to the uh, Indianapolis Colts here? He's a height, weight, speed guy. Like yeah. And Chris Ballard loves his height, weight, speed as GM of the Colts. Uh, cover three defense with Gus Bradley's scheme. Cooper DeGene, much better in, in zone coverage than as a, as a pure man corner. He had his pro day finally and had some really nice workout numbers at mm-hmm. that pro day. Running four four five, thirty eight and a half inch vertical at six feet and a half inch, two hundred two pounds. Um, you know, kind of just what you would have expected from his workout. Basically, not not anything insane, but didn't do his agilities either, which is what you want to see even more than the straight line explosive stuff because you already expected that. So I don't know if it locks Cooper DeGene in more, but I think it's a good fit here at fifteen. If you recall, in my corner rankings, he was number one, but the along with Mitchell and Arnold, who fall off this board pretty quickly after. I think you throw them in a bag and mix them up and to see what you want. You know, I mean, what's, what's, what flavor ice cream do you want? I love the gene and I like this fit a lot. I mean, for all the reasons Damien puts here, I mean, he could be your Sherman in your cover three, you know, run on offensive linemen into the twenties here. Uh, I want to highlight a couple of picks at the end. And that is Keon Coleman to the Baltimore Ravens. What do you think about yeah. Keon Coleman? I feel like he's fallen down boards, and it seems like Damian Parsons, the only guy that believes in him, is a first rounder still. It's interesting. I mean, as good as the Ravens are, and I still think they're one of the best teams in the league, they could go edge, they could go receiver. I think their O line's taking a lot of hits in free agency. I mean, they need a lot. Their second, their corner could be a spot for them. Seems a little early for Coleman, but he is a big-bodied guy that's much different than Zay Flowers. We know how important blocking is for those guys, and he will block. I mean, I heard him compared to a Marquise Colston recently, and I kind of like that, the comparison. It's a power slot. Xavier Worthy, wide receiver out of Texas, finishes up round one for Damian here with the Kansas City Chiefs at 32 and with what's going on with the Rache Rice. And, you know, Hollywood yeah. Brown's only on a one-year deal right with the Kansas City right, Chiefs is, I don't think that would change what you're doing at 32 if you're the Kansas City Chiefs and you know I don't, I don't think they have to go wide receiver but I think it's certainly a possibility and, and I think it's scary to have a guy with 4-2 speed in that offense with Patrick Mahomes I'd be equally scared if it was you know Brian Thomas Jr. or A.D. Mitchell or you, you know a dark horse candidate at number 32 for me Matt right now is Lad McConkey. yo I man think, I almost think that's scarier than 4-2-1 speed I do right? too I do too. He'd catch so many more balls, you know, I mean, he'd move the chain so much better, He's such a better route runner. And I don't even dislike worthy. He's really growing on me as a receiver, to be honest with you. I don't think he's just a track guy, but I think I would take McConkey if I were them. I also think tackle should be in play for them too. I mean, Sue Mattia went right ahead of him, but in this mock Guyton's available. I mean, their tackle situation wasn't pretty last year. Let's get into the second round here. And uh, the, the top 10 picks of round Two in this four-round mock draft, Carolina Panthers going wide receiver Xavier Leggett. Lad McConkey ends up going 34 to the New England Patriots. Love That, that would be their second ball. receiver taken. That, yeah. That's nice. I mean, he's a and lot very, different than Brian Thomas. Yeah, that's a good Now pairing. you're talking about a nest. You know, I I'm like liking that. that. Yeah. Get a left tackle. You get the big downfield dude from LSU. And then McConkey's the do-it-all guy. Okay, now we got What's some... Up, uh, it was Jacoby Brissett, right? Pick up Jacoby yep. Brissett in your fantasy teams, man. Yeah, right. I mean, throw in for 400. Uh, Chris Braswell to the Cardinals at 35. Kieran Omegaji, Yale offensive tackle, 36 to the Washington Commanders. Guyton does go to the Chargers at 37 here. Braden Fisk, uh, defensive tackle from Florida State to the Tennessee Titans at 38. Carolina Panthers going with Chop Robinson at 39. That's a smoking deal there for the Panthers to get Chop all the way down to pick 39 here. Um, and at 40. Coincidentally, not coincidentally, that's a pick they traded Brian Burns for. Go get another edge. Oh, there you go. Yeah, from the, yeah, yeah. From the New York Giants there. So yeah. getting a little bit more juice off the edge, undersized sort of an edge rusher and see if they can develop themselves another one. Washington Commanders going with Jatavian Sanders, tied in from Texas. Green Bay Packers at 41, Jordan Morgan and 42, the Houston Texans, their first selection in this draft. Brandon Dorless, who's getting some hype right now, uh, sort of a edge tweener, edge tackle. Out of Oregon, Brandon Dorless, 42 to the Houston Texans. What stands out to you in those picks to me? I think the one that stands out to me is Kieran Omegaji. Yeah, um, yeah, that's exactly what I was about to say. Ahead I, of Guyton, I, ahead of Morgan. You yeah, know. one pick ahead of Guyton, a couple picks ahead of Morgan. And I don't know what to do with Kieran Omegaji. There's, there's no either. profile for him right now. There's tape of him playing against non-NFL people at Yale. Um, 
he that's about it in the senior bowl and he still hasn't done his workout which is i think coming up in the next couple of days so that at least give you something but no combine no senior bowl i don't know how you draft him in the first two rounds yeah uh, and uh, i will default to damien on this one i'm sure he studied his tape more than i have but he apparently likes him and i a lot of people seem to i wish i knew more I do see a Guyton fall. The more I watch Guyton's tape, because I've done a lot of work on the 49ers, potentially taking mm-hmm. a tackle at 31, and Suamata, he is the guy they have here, which I like a lot better than Guyton. The more I watch them, Guyton is like standing straight upright, and he's 6'7". Like that, that's so tall, a yeah. leverage problem in the NFL. And, as, and even though he's pretty athletic, he didn't work out that amazing at the Combine as a former tight end. And there's a lot of holes in his game. And does he have so much athletic upside that it's going to be worth the the time that you have to put in there as only a one-year start or two at Oklahoma. So like Guyton boomer bust and the, the bust part, it just scares me because there's a, mm-hmm. there's a, there's a lot of bust there potential for, uh, for Tyler Guyton. It sounds like if I said BP, if a, you know, a genie comes out of the bottle and says, you can have Guyton at 31 today. Do you want it? Or you go fish, you're going to go fish. Huh? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah, I would go fish for another six, seven tackle in round two in Patrick Paul rather than take Guyton in in, in round one. Yeah, Yeah, exactly. Roman Wilson to the Atlanta Falcons at 43. Ricky Pearsall to the Raiders at 44. Mike Sanders still cornerback out of Michigan to the New Orleans Saints at pick number 45. And some interesting names here in the second round. Ben Sinnott is uh, is a name that's, I think, really Yeah, second rounder for him? Okay. People that watch his tape like him a lot. Apparently, teams really like him and don't be surprised if he's one of the top couple of uh, tight ends off the board. He goes to the Colts, athletic, can kind of fit that uh, that mold. As you know, he's he's tough enough to block, but can get out mm-hmm. on the move and split him out and do H back stuff with him. So, Kansas State tight end Benson, it's a, a name that I think is rising a little bit, along with Jalen Polk, wide receiver out of Washington. Odunze, a lot of receivers in the state, Holy oh, a ton of them. Yeah, you got. Uh, three wide receivers back to back. Ricky Pearsall just went 44 to the Raiders. Then you got Troy Franklin to the Jacksonville Jaguars after Polk to the Giants. You got Cincinnati Bengals going with Jalen McMillan, the third Washington wide receiver at pick 49. So that's what four out of five, four out of six uh, picks wide receiver. Five right? out of nine, five out of seven actually going from Atlanta to Cincy with mm-hmm. Wilson, Pearsall, Polk, Franklin, McMillan. Wow. My, my Steelers were hoping to get a receiver there two picks later, but I don't think it's happening. Three wide receivers from the same college in the top 50? Has that ever happened? How crazy is that? Wow. I think it could. I, I like Polk and McMillan more and more. I watch them too. Yeah. Good players. I, <laughs> I wonder. So I think, so there's those three Washington wide receivers. There's um, a, a popular mock draft pick, Matt, is Troy Fautanu going to the Seahawks at pick 16. Yeah. And Washington's old offensive coordinator is now the offensive coordinator. In Seattle, right? Yes, yes, yes. If you asked the ex-Washington, the University of Washington offensive coordinator, hey, what player was more important on your football team? Would he say the wide receivers or the offensive line, or would he say Michael Penix? I bet he'd say Roma Dunze. <laughs> <laughs> He's already off the board at 16. Right, 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 right. Well, there is what I'm getting at. So like, that was Penix to Seattle is what I'm saying. Look out for that one. No, I think that could be possible, but not if he's going to go 12, 13 neighborhood. I mean, if I'm Seattle. Well, actually, I'm, off the board too, in this market, yeah. big 16. So, yeah. It's kind of a compliment and kind of a negative to be on Penix. Is a lot of times he just chucks a ball up for one of these three. But if you have one of those three, what's wrong with chucking it up to him? You know what I mean? But it gets him out. It created a lot of big plays that other quarterbacks didn't have the advantage just to throw it up in the air and hope your guy comes out with it. A little run on interior defensive alignment in the end of round two in this mock draft. You got the Cleveland Browns going Chris Jenkins out of Michigan. That's pick 54. You got Tavondre Sweat, big old nose tackle out of Texas, 360. Just, just got himself in some trouble, if you heard. Going to, oh, he just got a, a DUI, didn't he? he? Over the weekend, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's not good. That's a big red flag. Like the one month you need to keep your nose clean and you, yeah. you get into Stay trouble. in bubble wrap in April. Yeah, that's so that's not great. Uh, going to the Cowboys at 56 here. You know, they just I mean, like two them. nose tackles in two years. <laughs> they try, they're trying to figure that out. I was like, well, 320 pounds wasn't big enough. Let's go 360 pounds and maybe we can take <laughs> off the, the run. Yeah. Front. Uh, and a couple of really interesting names here at the end, which is Ruka Rororo out of Clemson, who's sort of a mm-hmm. hybrid edge interior rusher at 63. And then Michael Hall Jr., who's a really good interior rusher to the Chiefs at 64. Yeah, those those guys are getting a lot of buzz, and I think I mentioned this the other day, but 
the more homework I do on the interior D line group, the more I like it. You know, I mean, I, something I, I they were I was a little late to the party at that position compared to some others, but um, man, I I think there's some guys to like in this neighborhood of the draft. Yeah, and and I like all those guys in the in a certain mm-hmm. role they could play in the NFL of those late second round guys, and and I love Johnny Newton as well in the first round. Byron, Mur- I think I like yeah. Newton more than Murphy actually. I do too. Yeah. Newsman, I think, like the most underrated player in this draft. He might be, and he's another guy that's going to work out this week. So maybe that's oh, why good, good. they had enough pub. So we'll we'll do a podcast uh, this week. I think Matt, once all of those pro days are done, about the late pro days and how it affects those guys' draft stock, including uh, Cooper DeGene. We'll get a little deeper into that conversation as well. Uh, let's talk rounds three and four. What stands up to us in this four round Damian Parson mock draft next. Today's episode is sponsored by BetterHelp Online Therapy. A lot of us spend our lives wishing we had more time. The question becomes, you know, what what is the what is their time needed for? Time for what? If time was unlimited, how would you use it? The best way to squeeze that special thing into your schedule is first of all to know what's important to you and then make that a priority. Therapy can help you find what matters to you so you can do more of it. So if you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online. It's designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire. You get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. Learn to make time for what makes you happy with BetterHelp. Visit BetterHelp.com slash locked on today. Get 10% off your first month. That's BetterHelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash locked on. All right, taking a look at uh, the uh, the end of day two and the beginning of day three in this Mock draft. What stands out to you, Matt? I want to start with actually the first pick of round three, Carolina Panthers. Zach Frazier, a center from West Virginia. And he's a player I've seen late round one. To get him at the mm-hmm. top of round three, I think it would be a really nice fit because I think he's a plug-and-play, day one starting type of center, former wrestler. He wins that leverage battle. I think there is a chance he falls a little bit further than some mocks have him just because he's not a physical marvel and he is an interior guy and it's a really deep draft with interior offensive lineman and I think people are going to race to to get those tackles early and that might mean the interior guys fall a little bit but you know Carolina Panthers need some work to do on offense and you know you got a short quarterback yeah paid pop- for guards yeah, yeah. right paid yeah. for guards go to center yeah so Zach I Frazier, talk about I talk about Zach Frazier every day of my life he grew up like <laughs> 45 minutes from where I'm sitting Steelers need a center He's a West Virginia kid, tough as nails. My hometown would burn to the ground if the Steelers passed on him at 51. I mean, trust me, it's it's a weird dynamic going on here. Speaking of which, three picks into the into the draft, Max Melton, uh, I had lunch next to him today. He was uh, visiting the Steelers. He was one table away. Good looking young man. You know, there you go. The best. There you go. 30 visit with Max Melton. So there you go. Yeah. And, and that's absolutely a player that they'll be looking at in this draft. If they're hoping to draft him with their pick in the third round, he might be gone, Matt. Uh, Washington Commanders up here yeah. at pick 67. And to be honest with you, I, I keep putting him in mock drafts to the 49ers at pick 94 late in the third round. He's not going to get there. He, you have to give him at 63 for the Niners, I think, late in round two. Yeah, yeah I mean, I've been saying if the Steelers are going to get him at 51, I mean, it's not going to be – I don't think he falls to round three. But impressive player. You got to love Blake Corum go to the Chargers, too. Yeah. Like, that's just too easy. You got to love it. Mark yeah. that one down in ink. I, I like that yeah. one. That's like – it's Joe Alt at seven, Blake Corum at 69. <laughs> Done deal. Forget about it. Yep. Uh, looking at the rest of this here, uh, any picks that stand out to you? How about a guy who gets no pub but has really good tape is the teammate of the guy that might be the first defensive player off the board, Layatu Latu's teammate on the edge at UCLA, the other defensive end, uh, Gabriel Murphy to the Atlanta Falcons at pick mm. 79. He's got really good tape. Nobody really ever talks about it. That's interesting. And I give Damian all the credit in the world for putting him up this high because – shows that he's doing the the work and the tape study and not just listening to headlines and all that type of thing. Cause I do know people are very high on him. Um, there's also some, some interesting corners in this neighborhood too, like Brownlee and Jerry and Jones. I mean, a lot of them are, I mentioned Melton that are a little undersized that are slots, but also could probably play outside. I think those guys, there's a, a round three neighborhood that a lot of those guys will start to fall. Malachi Corley. The this year's yeah. next Debo Samuel to the Houston Texans at 86, running that offense, trying to find mm-hmm. their version of Debo. I love that fit there for uh, the Houston Texans if the if he's still there in round three. Yeah, I mean, obviously it's less of a need after the Diggs trade, but it's not a bad setup at all. Yeah, very different style of player. How very about different Baker too? I mean, 
cool. I'm, I'm a fan. Waiting, I'm waiting with bated breath to see what day two wide receivers the Steelers steal out of this draft and becomes a you know an awesome player for them. Javon yep. Baker from UCSF or UCF, and I think it's a great fit too. Me too. I was a highly recruited guy. I think third round's about right for him because the receivers are so deep. Oh, here's the name. FCS level offensive lineman that's getting a lot of heat right now and could sneak into day two. And Damian has him going to 92 to the Tampa Bay. Oh, you have the same guy I'm looking at. Yep. Really? Mason McCormick from South Dakota State. Uh, Guard, center. He worked out fantastic. Uh, He turned down the opportunity to transfer to a Power 5 team. He said, I kind of want to finish what I started here. I like my teammates, and I want to finish it out at, at South Dakota State. Uh, really awesome combine. I think he's a solid player. I think he's a future starter on the interior at any of the three interior spots. And as a you know FCS guy, sometimes it's it's a little bit more difficult. But we saw uh, we saw Cole Strange going the end of round one, and Mason McCormick has a similar profile. I uh, yeah, it's funny you brought him up because he's been kind of my new crush. You know, I talk about centers for the Steelers, of course, but guys not in the top three center conversation. I think McCormick's my favorite. I mean, there's a lot of upside there. Taking a quick peek at some guys in round four. Uh, how about one of the biggest wide receiver prospects of all time? 114 to the Jacksonville Jaguars, Florida State wide receiver, Johnny Wilson. I don't know what to do with him. Uh, there was some intel from, I think it was Dane Brugler said he's talked to teams and some of them have a wide receiver. Some of them view him as a as a tight end. And like his comp is sort of like, I don't know, Darren Waller. Because that's, that's, what, that's the what Waller guy. was, right? Like it depends on the team, but he's really interesting. And, and I, I like him as a tight end convert myself. I do too. I mean, he's not going to. He's not going to be, you know, Kyle Brady, you know, on the on the line fighting with the ends time and time again. But in today's NFL, is he a little redundant for Evan Ingram? I just think they need pass catchers. Uh, uh, he, he probably is an understudy. And then I don't know how long Ingram's contract was. He signed a new mm-hmm. deal for last year, didn't he? I think so he's, by year yeah, two, he's got three, at least one more yeah. or something. Gives you. Yeah, he's kind of similar. I mean, that's too much thought. I'm not. I'm not criticizing the pick there at 114. But for right. Yeah. <laughs> but I think Wilson's going to be really high for some guys and not for some teams. Yeah. Yep. Absolutely. A lot of running backs in this neighborhood too, and I think there's going to be a running back run, man, somewhere you know, from pick like 85 to 115. Marshawn Lloyd with his versatility, what he can be out of the backfield. Mm-hmm. Um, He's a really interesting player to me. If he goes to the Baltimore Ravens at 113, he'll end up on a lot of my fantasy teams as well. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's a great fit. And there's a handful of these backs I think are better than people think. There's no Bijan in this class, but the ones that are going in this neighborhood could be pretty successful and be on a lot of my fantasy teams. And, you know, no other quarterbacks. Six in the top 13 and no more snuck in in the first four rounds. Oh, I saw Rattler in there somewhere. I'm, I'm scrolling back. I just want to make sure. So I was thinking that too. And that's, I think, the only one. Oh, I, uh, I just want to double check because I, I might have pulled round, that out of my butt. Really Rattler to the Patriots at 68. Oh, early round three. That's why I missed him. Yeah. I, yeah. I passed that to the Blake Corum pick at 69 to the Chargers. Rattler in round three, 68 to the Patriots. Yeah, that's nice. I mean, you talk about a nest. Question. You know, right. You kind of yeah. hedge in a little bit. Maybe, I mean, you assume you have a bad year. And maybe he plays the last four games or so just to see what he can do. Fashanu, you know, blocking on the left side. Two two receivers taken right after him. Okay. You know, I, I kind of like what the Patriots Hall here is. We already got a mailbag question for this week's edition, Matt, about mm-hmm. Spencer Rattler. So that's a good tease. And make sure you okay. guys get your questions in on Twitter at BD Peacock at Williamson NFL or drop a question in the YouTube comments and go check out the rest of Damian's mock and stay tuned to the ultimate 2024 Locked On Podcast Network mock draft special that will be dropping very soon. Do a lot of work behind the scenes. Everybody on the network involved in this, and it's always a whole lot of fun. So make sure you check that out as well. Matt and I, back tomorrow, right here, Peacock and Williamson.